Hello friends, in this video we will study about savanna climate which is a tropical grassland type of climate. This is also called as tropical wet and dry climate because of its distinct wet and dry seasons and it is well observed in the southern uh, southern region and hence its name the southern climate. In the previous video I have explained about equatorial rainforests which are present along the equator in certain regions where there is rainfall throughout the year and the savanna type of climate borders this equatorial rainforest climate because it is a transitional type of climate where with increase in latitude this climate gives away for the other climates like mostly the arid type of climates. So it is a transitional type of climate between the rainforest regions and the arid regions or any other type of climate. For example we have the African savannas we can see in this pink color. So this is all African savanna. It is a transitional type between the rainforest and the neighboring arid and semi-arid type of climates. So we have at the south we have Namib and Kalahari deserts. At the north we have Somali desert, Namib desert and the greater part of Sahara desert. So we can see how this climate slowly gives away into the or uh, mixes with the arid type of climatic conditions. Likewise we have in other regions as well like in Australia we have uh, the great sandy desert and in the north we have tropical monsoon type of climate and in between these two type of climates we have the savanna type of transitional type transitional climate and it is true with the South America as well we have selvas or Amazon rainforests and uh, these Amazon rainforests are bordered by a grassland called as Lianos which is a type of savanna, savanna grassland and other grassland to the south which is called as Camphos it is a part of Brazil most of it is in the occurs in the Brazil region. So these two types of transitional climate separates the equatorial rainforest from other types of climatic regions. So in the Copen scheme we have seen about different types of climatic regions based on density I mean vegetation and precipitation uh, as a consequence of which there is growth of natural vegetation. So he, now we are dealing about with tropical climatic conditions. In the tropical climatic conditions there are three different types. One is the tropical wet that is tropical equatorial rainforest climate. So we have seen this in detail in the previous video. So in this video we will study about the tropical wet and dry. In the next video we will study about tropical monsoon type of climate. So remember that all these are tropical climates. So there are mainly three types of tropical climates. Coming to the characteristics of this particular climate it is the most important feature is the distinct wet and dry season. The summers are wet that is the rains occur in summer and the winters are totally dry. So winter is a drought season and the most peculiar feature here is there is no distinct rainy season. So as in India there is no distinct rainy season and all the rains occur in summer itself. And here the annual rainfall is considerably lower. If we take equatorial rainforest or the tropical monsoon type of climate we have annual precipitation of about 200 to 250 centimeters per year whereas in the savanna type of climate the annual precipitation is about 100 to 150 centimeters so this is comparatively quite low and hence the droughts here are quite intense compared to the tropical monsoon type of climate. So we have floods and droughts like in the tropical monsoon climate so uh, we know that India is marred with both floods as well as droughts. In the rainy season we have floods and in the dry season it is totally dry and severe droughts occur in various regions especially in the rain shadow regions of western Ghats. Likewise in the tropical savanna climate also we have a distinct wet and dry season which is associated with floods and droughts. Coming to the vegetation and wildlife though there are certain similarities between tropical monsoon and tropical savanna climates. The most important difference is the vegetation and the lifestyle uh, which is uh, seen in this particular region compared to the tropical monsoon type of climate. So it has a very distinct uh, it's completely different from the tropical monsoon type of climate. Here the vegetation is totally different from the tropical monsoon type of climate. Coming to distribution there are different regions both to the north and south of equator and we have seen that they are nothing but the transitional type of climates between equatorial rainforests and the mostly arid regions. We can see the most important ones are Lianos which is to the north of equator it is a part of South African savanna, South American savanna and then Camphos which is which mostly occurs in Brazil 
and then we have certain parts of uh, this particular belt where regions like mali south, uh, south sudan and other various uh, re uh, small countries exist in this particular belt and to the south there are other countries like zimbabwe it is mostly at the border so rwanda malawi and the great lakes region all these regions fall under this particular type of climate and the australian savanna is completely different from the other types of savanna because it is well developed compared to the other regions so we'll see that so remember these two names the names of grasslands they called as lenos and camphos and in the african uh, savanna the grasslands are called as bush wells so this is the climatic graphs of various savanna regions so here we can see it is given indian conditions certain indian regions are also also fall under savanna but in reality due to irrigational facilities and various changes in the economy this particular region which was resemb resembling savanna few hundred years ago is now a totally different one it is greatly influenced by the tropical monsoon uh, climate and now it falls under tropical monsoon type of climate and very few regions exist where we can say it is a type of savanna because most of the lands are cultivated these days so this particular savanna climate has both <coughs> dry as well as wet seasons and we can see the distinct where a dry season followed by a wet season so it is true with both the regions in northern hemisphere as well as southern hemisphere so in the southern hemisphere usually winters occur uh, in the july months so when we have summer in the northern hemisphere the southern hemisphere sees winters so winter months have no rains whereas the summer months they see some amount of rainfall so the most important factor that determines the climate of tropical savanna is the movement of intertropical convergence zone so most of the tropical climates both tropical rainforest tropical monsoon as well as tropical savanna are influenced by the movement of itcz so we'll see that coming here coming to the climate of savanna we have a rainfall which is about 100 to 150 or somewhere to 80 to 160 cm per year it is comparatively much lower compared to the monsoon as well as rainforest type of climates and we have seen that summers are wet and winters are dry so during summers the onshore winds bring uh, moisture and cause rainfall so onshore on, onshore winds are the ones which flow from sea to towards the land so these are called as onshore winds and when winds blow from continents towards oceans in such a case they are called as offshore winds so offshore winds as they blow as they blow from continents they don't have any moisture so they, they don't cause any rainfall in the region whereas sorry offshore winds don't call any cause any rainfall in the region whereas onshore winds as they are moving towards the continents from the uh, seas they carry abundant moisture and they cause rainfall especially in the east and as they move towards the interiors uh, the humidity content decreases and it slowly gives away to the dry regions <coughs> coming to the temperature like every other tropical region here also the temperature is high the mean annual temperature is always greater than 18 degrees celsius and average monthly temperature would range from 20 to 32 degrees celsius whether it is based on winter or uh, summer but uh, during summer months the temperature can go as high as 45 degrees celsius and the winters are comparatively cooler because of a uh, grassland type of uh, climate Uh, here the extremes of climate do occur which is uh, which is why there is an extreme diurnal range or daily range of temperature whereas the annual range is comparatively lower so now let us look at how intertropical convergence zone creates this particular type of climate first let us start with january month so in the january we can see that the intertropical convergence zone is to the south of equator so there are various factors that influence the location of intertropical convergence zone whether it is on continents or seas usually on seas the variation is very low but when it comes to continents due to greater changes in temperature we can see these steep curves because of uh, the effects of continents so we can see in uh, winter there is intertropical convergence zone in this particular region of uh, savanna here there is good amount of rainfall because of the presence of intertropical convergence zone so winds northeast trade winds coming from the northern hemisphere take a curve at the equator because of the coriolis force so this is how the winds meet or converge at the intertropical convergence zone the northern winds have no uh, good amount of moisture because they are flowing mostly through continents whereas the south easterlies or south uh, southern trade winds they flow from ocean and pick up good amount of moisture so these are the winds which are responsible for rainfall in the savanna as well as equatorial regions so as we as the season changes that is when it gives away from 
winter in the northern hemisphere to the summer we can see with the at incoming of summer summer the intertropical convergence zone moves to this particular region and the winds blow in this particular in this direction because of the coriolis force they take a turn at the equator we know that in the northern hemisphere winds deflect towards their right and in the southern hemisphere the winds deflect to their left because of the coriolis force so these winds which are bringing lot of moisture cause rainfall whereas the north easterly trades these winds they don't cause uh, they don't bring any good amount of moisture so they are not responsible for rainfall whereas these winds which are flowing from the south are the important ones so this is how it changes so with along with the intertropical convergence zone the wind uh, the planetary wind system is also changing as a result there is distinct wet and dry season so if you see in january the northern hemisphere is not <coughs> influenced by trade wind belt even if it's there the trade winds are offshore winds so there is no rains so when we move on to summer that is in july month <coughs> we have winds which are coming from the south they are southeasterly trade winds and they pick up moisture and cause rainfall so in the northern hemisphere the rainfall is because of the same kind of winds but again they pick up moisture from the eastern side of africa other than the western side of africa if you look at the congo region which is a part of equatorial rainforest or the selvas we can see that the intertropical convergence zone is almost present there all throughout the year so these regions receive very good amount of rainfall throughout the year coming to natural vegetation because of less rainfall the trees here are very short they are called as deciduous trees deciduous are the ones which shed their leaves during dry months so here the winters are the dry season the winter is a dry season as a result trees shed their leaves in the dry season of winter to protect themselves from excess transpiration or uh, evapotranspiration so transpiration is nothing but uh, the loss of moisture from through the leaves during uh, photosynthesis photosynthetic process so in such a process the loss of moisture can be very damaging for the tree so to protect itself from uh, moisture loss the trees simply shed their leaves so this is one simple mechanism and they have broad trunks this is we know that the dry season is very distinct and it is very very long it can vary from 6 to 7 months so to to survive for all uh, in all these dry months they need some mechanism and this is how the broad trunks uh, have got evolved so with the help of broad trunks they store water and they use it during the dry season and they are umbrella shaped we know that any region which has little amount of uh, little natural vegetation like we can see in this figure is prone to wind movements a uh, very uh, fast wind movements we know that tropical easterlies blow in this particular area as a result the wind speed is very high so to protect from the winds the trees don't usually grow in very big sizes like in like the banyan tree in india this they they grow they be, they are evolved to uh, take care of all these climatic conditions so they have umbrella shaped so that they can they don't offer too much resistance to the wind movement and they can protect themselves and the grass we know that the tropical savanna itself is a grassland it's a tropical grassland so the most important vegetation is the grasslands so the tall grasses which are uh, which occur in the african savanna are called as bush veld and there is one more grass which is the tallest of all the grasses it is called as elephant grass so it grows up to a height of 15 feet so this is how tall the grass can grow so these grasses are not helpful for the for feeding the animals because it is very long and coarse whereas in winters when there is good amount of rainfall certain types of nutritious grasses grow here and there and these are the grasses which help in which help to feed the animals which are present in this particular region coming to animal life this particular savanna climate is called as big game country especially the african savanna this is because of the hunting activities which are carried out throughout the year in this particular region we know that these regions are not well developed and hence the the governance or uh, the government systems are not so strong most of them are very remote where uh, tribals inhabit the regions so lot of uh, western as well as various hunter from the around the world come to this particular place to hunt various animals so this is a huge uh, reason for controversy but still the hunters have no regulations and hence they freely go on hunting killing lot of elephants as well as other animals as well and also the smuggling is also rampant smuggling of uh, tusks of ele elephants and various other uh, products of uh, animals is very very rampant 
So we have both herbivores and carnivores. The most important feature of this type of climate is, the, is its peculiar natural vegetation. So this kind of natural vegetation is not found anywhere else. So in the equatorial rainforest, we have good amount of rainfall, but the animal diversity is not so uh, high as in the tropical savanna region. In the tropical monsoon climate, which is also a distinct wet and dry climate, but still here we, due to under the influence of monsoons, there are good irrigational facilities, and hence most of these places have got converted into agricultural landforms. So this is the only region that is the savanna habitat is the only region which supports abundant wildlife. So there are both herbivores, grass-eating animals, as well as carnivores, the ones that eat flesh. So most of the videos or documentaries made by National Geographic, Animal Planet and all other uh, channels uh, mainly come from this particular region, that is they are shot in the African savanna regions. We can see uh, various kinds of animals like zebras and other elephants, giraffes, which are all shot from this particular region. Along with these animals, there are reptiles as well. The important ones are crocodiles. So croc crocodiles are present in almost all lakes. So the human disturbance is very low. So these animals thrive in huge numbers. Along with the crocodiles, there are other animals which live in lakes. They are called as hippopotamus. So hippo hippos doesn't like very warm weather, I mean very uh, dry, humid or uh, what you can say, very hot weather. So to protect themselves, they live in lake for about 10 to 15 hours for a day, especially in the summer months. And we have another important animal is rhinos. So this is, and there are so many climatic conditions, but there is no climatic condition which can hold this amount of natural vegetation in the form of wildlife, both, I mean, only wildlife. The wildlife here is very, very significant. Coming to the life and economy, some of the tri mostly tribals inhabit this, uh, these major regions, especially in the African savannas. Whereas in the Australian savannas, uh, the region is well developed because of various uh, cattle rearing and ranching facilities. So this is one important region which exports a lot of beef and other cattle products to the world. So this is mainly because of technological advancements and well adaptation of various scientific methods. But the African savanna is very least developed because of various reasons, especially the resource curse phenomena where the mineral rich regions are subjected to a lot of instability, political instability and various other uh, kinds of instability, a lot of wars between tribal groups. So all these things kept this region a very undeveloped region and hence here the people still follow pastoral, uh, pastoralism or what you can say as uh, cattle rearing. And there are few uh, settled cultivators, a kind of advanced ones, especially found in Nigeria region. They're called as Hauswa. So they are settled cultivators. So here we have both the cattle rearing uh, people as well as the settled cultivators. Coming to crops, this region has immense agricultural potential, but still it is not uh, utilized well except in the regions of Australia. So it is totally underdeveloped as the resources are not tapped well. Uh, the, uh, the, there is huge scope for plantation agriculture and there we can uh, grow coffee, tea, uh, coffee, cane sugar and other uh, important crops and uh, depends on uh, what kind of irrigational facilities they can provide and then in the dry season in the dry regions cotton can be grown but none of them none of these things are actively encouraged because of various reasons as i've said political instability illiteracy and other uh, factors and mostly most of the developed countries come here to exploit the natural resources in this particular region so here the people don't gain from their own resources they only lose to other countries like china sometimes even india has ventured into this particular uh, conflict zones and then we have USA all these countries take a huge advantage of resources present here leaving them deprived of various important development facilities there are certain regions who have gone beyond uh, these uh, relying on the natural environment there so they have modified the environment to suit for their economy for example in the Queensland of Australia and other uh, neighboring states there is good ranching facilities, that is cattle rearing is the chief occupation and it exports the fine, one of the very important finest qualities of beef to the world. This is because of their scientific uh, way of doing, getting things done. And with that we have other uh, regions like Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania which have taken up cotton, cotton cultivation. So they have been successful in this kind of uh, cultivation. So the region with huge agricultural potential is slowly developing in certain areas, whereas in certain other regions, it is totally underdeveloped. 
so in west africa we have seen in equatorial rain forest cocoa is a very important crop so it is used for uh, chocolate making and a lot of it has given uh, good economy economic conditions to the region in the to the countries in the region so this particular cocoa oil palm and other plantation crops are being spread in the neighboring uh, savanna climate as well so we can say this is the neighboring savanna climate so these regions are actively taking up uh, taking up these plantation crops like oil palm and cocoa coming to farming farming well, the biggest ad, uh, disadvantage here for farming activities is the droughts like in india we have irrigational facilities in certain regions if not even our country would have been uh, very bad for farming but in africa due to i've said political instability and various other developmental factors the droughts play a very bigger role in determining the lives of the people so farming is not uh, such a profitable uh, profession in this particular region uh, the people still rely on pasture, uh, cattle rearing for their uh, bread and one more uh, important factor that <coughs> undermines uh, farming activities is the rapid deterioration of soil fertility due to leaching leaching is nothing but loss in certain important nutrients like nitrates phosph phosphates etc from the soil which are mainly washed away by the rain waters so we have seen here there is a distinct dry and wet season in the wet season that is in summer conventional thunderstorms occur very violently as a result they carry out or uh, take away lot of nutrients from the soil due to flash floods so this makes the soil very uh, poor and they are called as lateritic soils these soils are the ones which uh, become very hard during dry months and become very marshy in the wet months they are not so good for farming activities coming to cattle rearing here the chief occupation is pastoralism pastoralists or what you call that and uh, certain only few regions uh, take on take uh, other uh, activities like shifting cultivation shifting cultivation is more or less absent but in certain regions very near to the equatorial rain, rain forest they can be shifting cultivation whereas other uh, other tribes very few tribes follow settled cultivation and most of the tribes follow cattle rearing and other similar occupations so here cattle rearing is done purely for the domestic purpose there is no commercial uh, gain from this particular cattle rearing as these regions don't produce good uh, good grasses or meadow grasses for, on which cattle can feed and hence the cattle industry is not well developed so let us look at a question which one of the following is the characteristic climate of the tropical savanna region rainfall throughout the year we know that rainfall throughout the year is a chief characteristic climatic feature of equatorial rainforest region so this is not the answer rainfall in winter only and when we see about mediterranean climate we'll see how uh, it sees rainfall only in winters so this is a chief characteristic of mediterranean climate so this is also wrong an extremely short and dry season we have seen that the dry dry season is very long it can be about 6 to 7 months so this is also wrong a definite dry and wet season so we have summers which are very wet whereas winters are very dry so there is a distinct definite uh, dry and wet season this is common to equatorial uh, i mean tropical uh, monsoon climate as well so in the tropical monsoon climate we have a definite wet and dry season the wet season is associated with rainy season which might which, which might last for 3 to 4 months and the other seasons are called as summer and winter they are both dry and they to last for 2 to 3 3 uh, to 4 months so this is one important similarity between uh, the tropical savanna as well as tropical monsoon climates so these are climate graphs so this is all about tropical savanna type of climate thanks for 